Welcome back. Today we'll be looking at the last weapon in this series, the Hurricane. This and the other weapon showcases will be my last videos before the update goes live. So once it does, expect to see some more deep analysis and concrete stuff now that the numbers will be final. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. Okay, the Hurricane. So I decided to do something a little different with the Hurricane than what I did with all the other weapons, which was going for conservative builds and kind of like normal stuff that you might actually play. So I decided to kind of go all out with the Hurricane and go for the absolute greediest damage build I can possibly assemble. So obviously we're going to take damage, then we're going to take uh, rocket speed, just hit faster. Uh, armor break is a questionable choice in this tier depending on the mission type that you're going to play. But as I'm going to do dreadnoughts in this video, I don't think it'd be that effective since armor break only works out of, on one out of the three dreadnoughts. So I'm taking the faster missiles, because especially because that stacks with this overclock. So it's ridiculously fast and really funny. And then for DPS, we're obviously taking fire rate instead of mag since we're being greedy. And here's something a little questionable is in the fourth tier, you can either take area damage or weak point damage. But the, this mod right now in the experimental doesn't show any sort of statistical change. So I'm not sure. We're going to take it on the off chance it is working and just not showing up on the card. But, you know, keep that in mind. It may not be working. And the only place I'm not taking raw damage is in the final tier. I'm taking stun instead of nitroglycerin rounds. Since I'm soloing dreads, I'm realistically not going to be that far away from the dreadnoughts. So I don't think I'll get very much value out of nitroglycerin. Meanwhile, the... Uh, 25% stun chance with a 3 second stun is very effective against everything that isn't a Dreadnought, so I'd like to have that in my back pocket for when I need it. Without further ado, let's go and hop into an elimination. Alright. Let's show these Dreadnoughts what we can do. Having run this uh, build a few times and made it increasingly greedy every single time, this is the highest damage iteration I've built with it yet, and I have yet to actually try it out. But uh, knowing what the earlier versions of this look like, I can uh, promise you that we're in store for something good. Oh, frames, please. Perfect. Just what I was looking for. Probably the best idle inspect in animation of the new weapons. And gently place it back in. Come on, you can burrow. What's taking you so long? There's the nitra. Why are you digging? You don't have to dig. See what happens when you dig? Look at that damage. Beautiful. Waiting for his buddy to get in here. I'll just play with my toy until he does. Arbalist, are you lost? There you are. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty easy to make short work of a large enemy with this thing. high rocket tracking and turn speed makes it pretty hard to miss anything that's not moving incredibly quickly, especially with this weapon's ability to turn rockets around mid-air. It's very easy to hit Mactera and things as well, because obviously if you miss, the rocket's just going to do a 180 and come right back for them as long as you keep your crosshair on them. And with how fast the reload on the Hurricane is, I really don't think it's necessary to use Born Ready like it is with other gunner, or I don't know why I say other, the gunner's other high damage, slower shooting weapon, the auto cannon. So really, Zip Fuel is Big Bertha that doesn't require you to take Born Ready, which is, I think, a really interesting placement for it in the meta. I'd like to kill the Arbalist first. Oh, 
Or if I could just sweep them both at the same time. Oh, I lost him. Oh, he's underground. Not too shabby. So that did cost us about two-thirds of our ammo in both of our weapons, but... I mean, the killing power is hard to argue with. We will need to find some nitro before the next fight, though. You would definitely have to dial back the greed a little bit on this build in order to take it into multiplayer, at least four-player multiplayer. So that's something to keep in mind, but overall, the damn if you can support your nitro addiction, this build will uh, take you pretty far. I mean, look at that. What else? Two shots of loot bug. I should have hit him with the stun rockets to try to get that weak point exposed to me. So you can see that uh, that 25% stun chance hits pretty often. And is quite effective when it does. Does not show much mercy. There are very few enemies in the game that are immune to stun. And those that are usually move slow enough that the zip rockets will be able to keep up with them and kind of mitigate that drawback. So, yeah, I think stun is kind of the way to go in Tier 3. I believe you can one-shot a grunt with a weak point shot with this current build I have. Obviously, it's a missile launcher, so hitting weak points is a little tricky, but it, uh, it when it hits, it hits. Two shots try jaws to the weak point. Definitely is a little bit more unforgiving with misses than the other rocket launcher builds. Because just how fast the missiles will pass your target and hit a wall. As you can see, if you have the time to be deliberate with where you place your shots, you can absolutely tear up some enemies. In a very ammo efficient way. Ah, that's a bit of a shame, but I can show you how effective the stun module is against the sentinels here. This was the thing that sold me on the stun for dreadnought, even for dreadnought missions, was just locking down the sentinels and pummeling them. Because even when you're solo, since the sentinels glow in the dark with their, their glowing behinds, you can just snipe them from across the caves. And considering this is the fastest velocity you can get with this weapon, I mean, if you can't hit a moving target at range with this, you I mean you won't be able to hit him with anything. You can see just how hard this is hitting the armor flaps. Only have 13 rounds in the mag. Let's see if we can phase him. Not quite. I'm gonna take two extra rounds, I think. Yep. So at less th or at about half of the mag. I was almost able to phase the hive guard. One or two more rockets would have done it. So right here, we should be able to stun all of these sentinels and just lock them down. So had I not been in a shield, I would have been able to hold those guys pretty well. And also, you know, backpedaling. That was close. I uh, might get bitten here. No, nope, we're good. Well, with the other weapons, I defended their ammo, depleting very quickly, with the argument that I was using exclusively that weapon. This weapon and build, less so. I am actually just highly ammo inefficient, just pumping out the damage. That is uh, not the fault of solely using the weapon. It's, it's the build's fault. Now normally I would advise you to try to arc the rockets around and hit the sentinels and the weak points, but with how fast these missiles are, you can see that they just, they don't turn fast enough to get back here. They just are, they turn out there and hit a wall somewhere. So it's just really not feasible. Also they don't lose any AOE damage, so... While you are sacrificing a lot of 
Oh, hang on. Let me make sure that's true before I say anything. Uh. Okay, negative. Ignore that. They do lose some AoE damage. Although it's not, it doesn't seem to be all of it because they still hit for decent AoE. Yeah, not too bad. Soloing two Dreadnoughts off of one resupply that quickly is pretty good. Pretty damn good. Even the most ammo efficient or ammo hungry gunner builds would suffer to do that in the past. So I think the Hurricane definitely fits a niche. And while the plasma rockets did get nerfed so you can't quite as easily swarm enemies with plasma bees until they die anymore, it's still a very viable overclock. I used it whenever I recorded this video initially, but as, since it got nerfed and a lot of people have de seen it in a lot of different states, I wanted to use something different just so there was something more consistent in that video. Which is also why I've been waiting to make weapon evaluations until the actual update comes out because, you know, the numbers are still moving around right now and everything's kind of up in the air. Things are getting nerfed as people discover it and people want to show off the really cool stuff they discover so they post it immediately. People get impressions made and then it gets nerfed, you know. It's how these things be. But yeah, overall, I really like the Hurricane. I think it plays really well. Has a very diverse set of builds. Kind of gives the PGL a good fight for how diverse the setups that can actually be. So, yeah, that's uh, some battle I got for the Hurricane. Really good weapon. I'm really happy with it. And that's all I got for the Hurricane. Definitely try this weapon out for yourself. There's a lot of really diverse builds out there. I'm excited to see what people can come up with. I will be streaming the update the day it goes live on November 4th, so if you'd like to catch that out, go check out my Twitch. Also, if you'd like to talk to me or any of my community members about the upcoming update, you can find us over on Discord. As always, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.